Matt Lenehan Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store. Always a pleasure to be joined by Paul Smith. Paul, look, we're here in Manchester. We're going to get on to why we're here in a minute. Um, we've not caught up since the big fight last weekend, obviously. Dimitri Bivol, Artur Betabev. Before we talk about who you thought won, just say what a fight. Yeah. I was at home watching it. It's the elite versus the very elite. Um, I want to know how you saw it and just give us a bit of a, a breakdown of why you thought what you did. I had a little go on Twitter on the night just to, just to debate, not that it ever ends in a debate. With you the, love swear a bit, don't you? With the idiots <laughs> on it. You know what I like going on every now and then, and I do get sucked in, but I go on sort of just to prove a point to myself, to, 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 to tell myself why to stay away from it. And <laughs> you're arguing with people who've never been in a boxing ring in their life or been near a fight in their life, and they're arguing over like stuff what's technical and that. But look, all, all jokes aside, on the fight, I had Bibble 7 5. I can see why it was 6 all. I could even see why it was 7-6, seven, 7-5, seven, sorry, to Batavia, because I think it was round 4, maybe, round 7 or 8. Again, I haven't watched it back. I might watch it back. I might get, if I get in, <coughs> I've got a bit of time later on or something. I, I might watch it back, but on the night, I didn't think Batavia had won 7 rounds, never mind 8 on that scorecard. But as I said, I can see why. And unfortunately, nowadays, when you score in fights, you can say... I added that, but I can see why, because maybe an uneducated judge, maybe even an educated judge, fighter, ex-fighter, can just see pressure and someone forcing the fight, and I, I do admire that, but if you're hitting gloves and elbows, it's it's wasted pressure, and it's not scoring. I think the stats, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on it, but I I think from what I've read, Bibble threw 500 and something punches and landed 260-something, yeah. and Batavia threw 1,028 or something and landed about five more. Now, efficiency and effective, effectiveness in boxing does count for something. I know it's round by rounds, I get that totally, but yeah. if we're doing round by rounds, I gave Bibble seven rounds. I can't see how the table won eight. Um, on that card, I, I can see why people are giving a draw. I wouldn't have complained at a draw at all, and I probably wouldn't have complained had it been that not one wide scorecard. So, yeah. so look, I, you can't complain, it's not a robbery by any stretch. Yeah. I just, I'd feel very hard done by if I was Bibble. Is this one of them where we talk about interpretation because we all have a way of looking at a fight and I was adamant at the end of the fight, like you just said, not that my opinion means anything, but just from an outsider saying, Bibble's won that fight. I can't see it, I can't, it'd be harsh to call it a robbery, but I also find it, found it very harsh to at least not have him winning the fight, if yeah. you know what I mean. The, the flashier work, not for what it is, the cleaner shots, and I just thought the way he managed the rounds, knowing that Betabiev's a pressure fighter, I thought he picked his spells, went to uh, stand his ground quite well, and went to move. And look, the last two to three rounds, the pressure was on, and that was Betabiev's. I think they're they, they quite clear rounds, I think, maybe the last three, definitely the last two. The last two, definitely. Last two. I think the 10 was a difficult round to score, again, if I remember rightly, and, I, and I'll have to have a look again, but there was a period in the fight where I could hear Mark Ramsey in the corner, shouting to his coach, shouting to Bibble, you are not tired after six rounds. And I tweeted at the time, Batavia looks fucked. And he looked tired and he looked like he was feeling sorry for himself. Listen, there's an old saying on boxes, he mightn't travel well, he might not have traveled well. You don't know. It's all speculative, it's all just our opinions. He might not have traveled well. When he was tired in the six, when his corner was shouting, I felt like he didn't win a round for probably three or four rounds. On the, again, on the night when I was sitting on the couch. Now, this, I think it was the seventh that was debatable. I think he had a terrible sixth, if I remember right. And he might have come back in the seventh and had a little bit of a spit. But then he got a second win, probably around 10, 11, 12. The tenth, if I remember rightly, was debatable. But that's why I, I can't complain at uh, a 7 5 Batavia because those two rounds are razor thin. And if you're giving them on pressure, which I don't think I did, then you've got Batavia 7 5. So I've seen people whose opinions I respect, who I know can judge a fight really well, and they've gone against me, and I think I can judge a fight really well without being begetted. <laughs> but, it's what you like, and, and I've got no complaints about it. I just would feel a bit hard done by by it if I was um, Bivol. And listen, I had a bet on Batavia as well, by the way, so yeah. I'm still saying I felt Bivol won the fight. Do you want to see it again? I mean, I'd what a to. fight. I'd love to, but who, who wouldn't? Why wouldn't you? I'd love to see it again. Doesn't matter whether the belts are there, the IBF or the mandatory. You know, I, that's just the, that's just the top fight. That was that was unbelievable to watch. It was brilliant to watch. I, I'm I'm good that I wasn't there after watching it, and I had a great seat on the couch watching it from a good angle. Um, but 
I'd love to see that again. Just a couple more before we come on to obviously Steve Clark being here. Um, I want to talk um, first of all the Liam Cameron Ben Whitaker fight. I know there's a lot of thing about that, but I want to talk about the story of Liam Cameron first, the positive side. Uh, I remember this guy going through his ban when we see people get bans these days, which are in layman's terms nothing, absolutely nothing. And he had four years out, come back, depression, the works, and he's now hopefully in the midst of changing his life, signing with Frank Warren, and he put on a good performance against Ben Whitaker. What did you make of the whole, the fall? I've seen an interview Ben Slom's done with uh, Lewis Hart from ourselves um, saying that Ben's previously had I think, um, neck issues and spinal stuff and look, promoters are always going to back the fighters. But what did you make of it when you saw it with your own two eyes? It's the first neck issue I've seen where someone starts an ankle up. You know what I mean? It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot of shit. I don't know what he's done. No one knows what he's done apart from him. I always see, I always see people and I see fans more importantly, more, more, more aesthetically. I see fans defend the fights and go, and he's done his eye socket like, says who? Where's the proof? Where's where's the X-ray or where's the diagnosis from the doctor? Until I see that, I don't believe anything with injuries. A sprained, a sprained ankle, sorry, outside the ring, but apparently he was saying a previous injury before before these fights or whatever he said he's, I, there was something I believe with the neck and spine where it might have affected look we don't know we haven't seen it but the fight itself we don't know and all we can go off is what I see I saw the aesthetical tweet that he, he suffers a Chinese pain and, I, and it, it made me laugh my head off on the night but at the end of the day only he will know and Liam Cameron has every right to feel aggrieved and to feel happy about himself because the tide was turning in the fight I still I'm not defending Whitaker. I still feel he had another gear or two to go through from what from what I was feeling watching it, but I'm on the couch watching it. I can't hear the noises out of them. I can't I'm not that close to the action. But watching that on the couch, I felt he had another gear or two, but he was having it tough. And it was his first proper test that I felt was a good test and it was very close. I wasn't scoring it. The house was chocolate, but I'm watching it, but I wasn't keeping score. I, I, I just enjoyed the fight. Yeah, I just yeah, I just like to just watch the boxing sometimes and enjoy it. And I was and it was a good fight. When that happens, I was more like, what are them doctors doing in the ring? The referee should be in control of this and everyone up the ring. And then I seen a cornerman come in and put the stoop. That's a disqualification. That's, that's how, if you want to get technical on the rules, the old rules years ago when, when I was boxing, when even up to the last 10 years, not even 10 years, if you can't complete a fight or finish a fight, whether it's from an accidental leg clash, a butt, an intentional, whatever, it might, if, it, if the referee didn't see the intention, if it's accidental, you lose. And... and I felt for Cameron because there was no way that he was losing the fight or would have lost the fight. He could have been a round down, he could have been a round up, he could have been level. It was very close as was given on the night. But the tide's just turning in his favour there. And he's probably seeing the pound signs and he's probably seeing the finish line and he's probably thinking, I've got more experience here than you. I can dog this out, I can rough this out here. And I felt the rough stuff. Whitten was throwing the head in a little bit, he was liking to get his head in the middle. Cameron rolled it out. Whitaker started complaining to the referee, started moaning, didn't like it when things were go weren't going his way. And that to me is, that sums up what I believe he is as a fighter. We're probably more interested in the idea of being a fighter, probably more interested in when it's all going his own way. And not actually when things are getting hard and I hate the old saying, but you know, when you're in a doghouse, when you're in when you're in a rough spa and it's not going your way, you've got to ride it out, grind it out for three more rounds when you get fucked. And, and that's unfortunately what you need as a fighter for him because I'm not sure whether it's there or not, and, and unfortunately for him now, there's going to be a lot of question marks and a lot of, from him, unwanted heat, unwanted criticism, because he's a, he's a good fighter, he's a very good fighter, you're not a bad fighter overnight, but as he got it now to reach the top level, I wouldn't put a penny on him to do it now after that, and I'd love to see the rematch because, as you said, let's finish on a positive. <coughs> Liam Cameron, what a story, it was a bullshit ban anyway, I've never took cocaine in my life, but that is a... I'm seeing people failing drug tests and they're fighting again the following month. I'm seeing people six failing drug tests and they're getting six month bans for performance enhancing drugs. That was a recreational drug when he was having a hard time in his life. And you've seen it with Xboxes who've been caught on it. 90% of the population do it. I, I, I used to get offended when I was offered it, offered it when I was a kid. I get offended when I'm not offered it now because everyone's taken it. As I say, I don't take it, it's not for me. It never has been, but he's got involved in that. He certainly paid the price and the fact that he's back after all that good on him and I'm buzzing for him his manager's a nice lad and made up for them as a team and hopefully now he'll get what he deserves he'll get paid well for, the, for hopefully the rematch but I don't know if you'll see the rematch I think the um, I think as well it weren't just like a recreational thing I think at the time I don't I think he completely refuted it and what came up in his system wasn't even like a 
I don't even know the, the measuring term, but when you see what happens in today's time, it's like, not me really. But moving on from that, um, Steve Clark, let's talk to him about Steve Clark on this card. Look, made a lot of noise. I know there's that tag of, because he sells a lot of tickets, a ticket seller, but you obviously know him quite well. He's got under good tutelage under, St under your brother, um, Stephen. What can we expect from him? Is he, is he at the right sort of level you want him to be at this stage? Yeah, he, he, exactly that level. It's his first year as a pro. And the plan was to try and get six fights in the first year. You know, if we can get one more, maybe, then, then great. He just needs to learn the pro game now. He, he, he had a bit of an amateur style when he first turned pro. There's still a little bit there in there, but that takes time with every fighter. You know, I had a bit of an amateur style, although more suited to the pros. Callum had an amateur style, although Stephen has a very amateur style and then adapted to the pros. Liam has a pro style when he turned pro. Um, but everyone has to adapt and develop, and he's developing nicely working with Stephen and doing good work in the gym. He's improving exactly at the right pace, what I, what I want him to, and, and he's being matched the right way, and he's fortunately enough for him. He's on these, for all of us, he's on these big shows, and he's selling a lot of tickets as well, which helps. He seems as well, like from just right speaking to him, I may have got this wrong, you'll know, but he seems to have um, the perfect temperament. Like He's not, he, like, he comes in very down to earth kid, and look, you never know, that can change when you get a few quid and you start bouncing up, but I know you wouldn't really associate yourselves with that kind of character, but what's he like as a person, like, a, a, you know, is he the same, you know, everyday life? He seems to be just an everyday kind of kind of guy. I keep having a little wind up with him and wind him up saying, oh, you'll have a film crew or something next to you, like trying to... Netflix. Trying, oh, to, yeah. trying to gold him into, like, reacting. He's just such a nice kid, a nice lad, a, a, a family man, a family lad. He, you know, loves his mum and dad, his parents, his brothers and sisters. He's, he, he's, he's still at home. And I think if you'd offered him a chance to move out, he probably wouldn't move out. He, he, he's, he's smart. He's got his degree. He was in, he's, he'd done his degree with one of my daughters in the same on the same degree, business management and finance in, in the same university class. And just honestly, without blowing smoke up his ass, he's a pleasure to manage. He's a pleasure. He's, he's a pleasure to know. He's, he's, he's a friend. He's a family friend. His family and my family have always been friends. His dad, my dad, and he's he's. He's not going to be one of them who's too nice to box, by the way, as well, because I know there's a switch there. I know, I know when he gets in there, he'll want to hear people. He'll want to, he'll want to turn that spy from the sun, and that's not putting him down. That, that's a good thing to know. You've got to be able to do that. There's been a couple of fighters who were just too nice. There's been others like Crawler behind you, who's lovely lads outside the ring, and a nasty spiteful bastard in the ring, and that's what you've got to be. Unfortunately, I think Steve's got that in his locker. It's what we want to make sure he's got to keep that in him if he has got it. But outside the ring. He, He's a diamond. He's so respectful and polite. You're having a conversation with him. He's staring in your eyes, listening to you intently. Stephen in the gym doesn't have to tell him to do anything twice. And managing him is a dream. It's the easiest, the easiest job in the world with him. You say something and he's done it. You say something and he's there. You ask him on a ticket to go on the flying. You know, everything about what he's doing is professional from the start. So long may it continue. Absolutely. Well, look, we look forward to seeing his progression. This arena, by the way, over there last night. I've said this in a few interviews. I haven't seen it yet. Unbelievable. I was there for wrestling with my lad last night. I was in the old MEA all last night watching Chris Stapleton, and that was something else. But I'm dying to get in this stadium. Unbelievable, mate. Look, I appreciate your time as always. Good luck on the night, obviously, with him, and we'll catch up soon. Thanks, mate. Thank you.